Wisconsin Foodie would like to thank the following underwriters. We are a collection of the finest farmers, food producers, and chefs on the planet. We are a merging of cultures and ideas shaped by this land. We are a gathering of the waters, and together, we shape a new identity to carry us into the future. We are storytellers. We are Wisconsin Foodie. You can't talk about Sheboygan without talking about Bratwurst. And you can't talk about Bratwurst without talking about the home of the grand champion brat, Miesfeld. Three generations have been at the helm making these brats and other assorted products that literally define this place. Let's go check it out. Hey Luke, welcome to Miesfeld. Hey Rich, thanks a lot. Glad you could join us today. Oh, I am super excited to be here. Uh, what do we have going on? Well, I'd love to give you a quick tour of our little retail store here. Follow me. Great. So here at Miesfields, we have about 30 different variety brats, or specialty brats as we call it. And we store them in six packs in this big bunker right here. Wow. So depending on what kind of flavor you're in the mood for, or a little sample pack, we got something for everyone. From chicken brats, to bratwurst with horseradish, cheddar cheese bratwurst, to Swiss cheese and mushroom. Everything that a pal could desire. What's your favorite? Uh, mine's got to be the jalapeno cheddar. It's just got a little bit of sweet heat, and that cheddar cheese just really calms it down when you're eating it. I like to cook up one of those as a sampler while I'm on the grill, and then have the original <laughs> uh, for dinner. And you guys are you're world renowned for these brats, and not to mention a grand champion brat, right? The original brat, the, the grand original champion, brat. the yes. OG. That is the uh, 1941 recipe that Chuck Meesfield the first came up with. No kidding. Yep. That's what it takes to get your name on the building. Yeah, you just gotta come <laughs> up with a grand champion bratwurst and you get a name on the building. So this place, Meesfields, has been owned by three generations of actually Chuck Meesfield. Chuck Meesfield the first, Chuck Meesfield the second, Chuck Meesfield the third, and now you're looking at him, Richard Soxie the second. Um, I partnered with Chuck about eight months ago um, as he uh, nears retirement age. So him and I are now partners. He's still around. He's still around and I think he's the best one to show you all the different sausages we make and really go through the meat counter here because we have one of the biggest meat counters probably in Wisconsin. So let me take you over here and introduce you to Chuck. Let's go say hi. Look. Let me introduce you to Chuck Meesfield III. Hey, Chuck. Hey, Luke. How you doing? Good. What an honor. It's great you guys are here. We appreciate it. The Meesfeld brat, the grand champion brat, is something that I've identified with as a kid from Wisconsin for, you know, a decade at least. Tell me a little bit about your brats. Well, I think the main thing, uh, everybody can make brats. Uh, it's the ingredients. We use the freshest pork, the finest pork. Uh, we still use Grandpa's 78-year-old uh, recipe, which is very important. Is there any pressure in that to, to not mess up Grandpa's recipe? Well, they always say the third one screws it up, right? <laughs> <laughs> I proved them wrong on that one. Yeah. So. Your customers, I mean, are most of these people from Sheboygan, they've grown up on this brat specifically. We have a lot of people that are really loyal customers. It's amazing. We see now some of their kids shopping here and their grandkids shopping here. I've, I've been here a long time. Yeah. I've been here 51 years. Believe it or not, uh, I started when I was 10 years old vacuuming floors in the old store. We had a carpet. It was the market with the red carpet. So I vacuumed floors. When I turned 12 years old, I started making brats in the sausage kitchen on, in the summers. So I was working 40 hours a week, so I, and I loved it. So you have 30 varieties of brats over there. Correct. You know, chicken, pineapple, teriyaki. What would your grandfather think of the chicken, pineapple, teriyaki? <laughs> Uh, I think he'd be rolling. <laughs> Everything was pretty straight laced traditional then and you know how times have changed when you have to have all these different flavors, you have to find something for everyone. Yeah. So he'd be proud but he'd be very surprised. <laughs> our snack sticks, our beef snack sticks that you see here have really taken off. We make 12 different flavors now, of course with the brats too, you have to expand. And you know there's a lot of stuff actually in this place. Yeah, we do a lot. You can, you can come here one stop shopping and get a lot of gourmet items and uh, still the regular things. We're proud of it and we want to we want to share it. Uh, we've expanded to over 70 supermarkets in Wisconsin now. 
We just went national yesterday, as a matter of fact, so we can Congrats. expand throughout the whole United States. Uh, we're really looking forward to it, to, to growing the brand. We've got a great product. What else do we have here in well, front good, of us? Good example, the, the Braunschweiger, you talk about my grandfather. Uh, when I started making sausage back in the 70s, he always came up to me and said, he loves Braunschweiger, and he said he likes putting horseradish on it. Uh -huh. He says, hey kid, do me a favor, save me the step, put it inside. So we have horseradish Braunschweiger. Nice. So that, and that's a, it's a huge seller, you don't see it anywhere else. Just certain little things like that. Um, of course, we've changed the recipes over the year, but a lot of them are the basic recipes. I mean, I gotta give credit to my grandfather and my father, they really knew what they were doing, you know? And uh, they had a passion for it, and that's what you need. Uh, our sausage maker, Eric's been here 32 years. My manager, Tracy, 34 years. Uh, we have one guy that was the assistant uh, back when I was growing up, Ken Zastro, worked here 52 years, just retired three years ago. Wow. So we have longevity here and that, that's great. I mean, that's, that shows you know, dedication and, and they're putting their heart into doing this. What's the secret to the longevity of a Miesfeld employee? Well, there's, I think there's a couple things. You, you have to treat your people right. And if you treat them right, they're gonna work for you. And when they see the results, they take a, a, a piece of raw meat and form it, grind it, add seasonings, and you turn it out and you look at something like this that tastes great, I mean, it, it, it's pride, a lot of pride. Yeah, and it's great to see the Miesfeld name is gonna continue. Yeah. And that was very important for me when I, when I partnered up. We can grow, but we wanna keep our, our product the same and uh, never change that, that tradition. Hey, Luke, you ready to try your hand at some sausage making? Are you ready to have me try my hand at some sausage making? Well, first you gotta gear up. <laughs> yes. Awesome. I'll be back this way. Chuck, thanks so much. You bet. Awesome. Yeah, we're yeah, heading, in, heading in here today as our sausage kitchen. Wow. Uh, we're making a couple different variety brats today. We got our burger brat, our cheddar burger brat with bacon. We have our mushroom Swiss brat and our jalapeno brat. Uh, let me introduce you to a few of the guys here. Darren. Hey, Darren. Yeah, the fist bump. That's this nice. is Eric, a head sausage hey, maker. Nice to meet you. This is not a small time operation. No, we're, uh, we're growing every day right now, expanding as much as we can. Luke, you're in good hands here. I'll catch up with you later this afternoon. Sounds good. Thanks Thank a you. lot, Rich. So it seems like there's a, there's a lot of varieties of brats you guys are putting out here, right? Oh, yeah. We, I'd say about 30 kinds. Yeah. 30 kinds. Yeah. We make a lot of specialty brats, too. Today we're making uh, bacon cheeseburger brat, uh, nacho brats, mushroom Swiss brats. Uh, yesterday we made buffalo blue cheese brats. So there's anything you can think <laughs> of. <laughs> and this seems pretty high tech, right? Tell me a little bit about the evolution of brat making in your time here. How long oh, have you been here? 33 years. 33 uh, years. Yeah. Uh, well, everyone knows uh, the old hand crank stuffers. Yeah. Uh, throw the meat in there, crank it out, put the casing on the end. This is Darren here. Darren, why don't you show him how we do it nowadays? We got a, a vacuum stuffer here. We've got uh, hog casings that are already put on uh, zip tubes, so you can put them on the on the horn really quick. Yeah, that's ridiculously fast. And there they are, coming out all linked. He's, right now he's adjusting the, uh, the casing so that he gets the correct tension on the brat sure. so that they're not too loose or not overly stuffed. He's feeling for the, the tension of the brat. Okay, so when the hopper is full, how many pounds of uh, how many pounds of brat mix do you have in there? You can have 500 pounds in there. 500 pounds. Yep. And how many runs does that, does that can, produce? He, Darren can stuff that out in about a half an hour. I mean, it's crazy automated. The technology has definitely allowed you the uh, opportunity to expand. There's still like an artisan feel to oh, each yeah. and every one of these. Oh yeah. So the stuffer <laughs> will stuff them out exactly a quarter pound each. Here, he ran out of meat. This is the end of his run, so he straight stuffed it here. Sure. So this is what you would normally see come out of uh, your hand crank. Right. And then people either twist them like this or yep. they braid them. These, I'm just gonna estimate, kind of wing it. Yeah, you're eyeballing, but the, it still looks pretty close to uh, that quarter pound mark. Yeah, yeah <laughs> close. <laughs> That's the, uh, the hands of an artisan. Yeah. What we should get you to do is, uh, if you got time, wash your hands and we'll get you on there. We'll, sh we'll see what the difference yeah. is. <laughs> so I'm about to get on the uh, broad stuffing machine and I'm uh, not gonna lie, I'm a little bit nervous. Uh, I've made brats before, but this is 
I think, intimidating because they have to move fast. I'm a professional. I don't want to mess this up for these guys. I don't want to slow them down. No pressure, right? None. Walk me through. Okay, Darren's going to grab a casing that's on a zip tube. Yep. It's going to have you open the lever. Open the lever. We're going to wipe the end of the tube clean. Okay, yep. We're going to slide it on. This is the horn, right? Yep, that's the stuffing horn. Okay, I'm going to get it on here all the way. Yep, and just rip it through there. There you go. Sweet. Okay. So far, so good. So awesome. you, gotta, you want to try and feel the individual broad as, as it's coming out. Just okay. don't, don't grab it, just, just feel it, the just surface feel tension. It. Right. The knee lever turns it on and hit it wow. again to turn it off. Well, that's pretty good. You're hired. So I can feel it. Like <laughs> What I'm feeling, obviously, that surface tension like you're talking uh -huh, about. Uh -huh. I'll keep this casing up here a little keep bit. Keep it up, okay. Yeah. It's pushing against my hand, and it really is just kind of making sure that your hand is there to guide it through. Uh-huh. Okay, oh, knee lever. Oh, boy. Forward, push well, it forward. forward. There, there we, go. we go. So I busted one. Why did I break one? Is yep. that because I didn't move these down in a far enough away? Uh, yeah, you got to keep the casing going forward and okay. then, and then uh, light tension. If <laughs> the more tension you put on here, the tighter it'll be. See this one compared to this one? Yeah. See, Darren won't do that. Right. <laughs> he better not do it. <laughs> You've been here 10 years, right? Yep. How long before you get the opportunity to actually work the stuff? How long before you get this, this station? Well, it took me a while. I started in sanitation, uh, that's, that's, cleaning the whole plant. Yep, that's how most guys start. They start in sanitation when they're young. Just kind of climb the ladder, so to speak, and that's what I do full time. This is what you do full time. Awesome. Dude, thanks so much for letting me, uh, you know, muck up your station a little bit here. <laughs> My I, pleasure. <laughs> I bet, I bet. <laughs> awesome. Well, where do we go next? These, these brats are going to get uh, chilled down uh, so they're a little firm. Once they're firm enough, then they'll uh, uh, put them through a roll stock machine and uh, package them. Uh, right now, they're, they're too soft to package. Sure. So I'm, I'm spacing them out so the cold air can get between them and chill them. Okay. So up so one side. Two, two up and two down. Two up, two down. Okay. So hold it there. And then we're coming up again. Like that? Like, like, like this. Okay. Two up, two down. There we go. <laughs> there you go. Sheboygan bling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then you lay them on and space them. Yep. Okay. Did I get that right? How am I screwing this up? That's how I can fix it. Yep. Yeah. Look at me. You gotta go like this. Here we go. Here. <laughs> <laughs> Here's that UW education. Two up, two down. <laughs> Just like that. Well, All right. I, even I got one grooved up. All right, good. You see, it happens to the best of us. Yep. We've got something kind of interesting going on in the other room here. We've got summer sausage that just got out of the smokehouse. They're, nice. rinse, they're rinsing the grease off of it. Did you want to take a look at that? Yeah, of course. This is our smoke room. We've got uh, four smoke houses here. Got a batch of summer sausage that just got done. I got to uh, rinse it off. Rinse, rinse the grease off with a hose. You can yes. see it's, it's how shiny it is. There's a little bit of grease on there. We want to try and get that off. Eric, what's the difference between the two cases? Well, this is a, a hookie casing. We uh, import that from Germany. And uh, this is just a, a regular fibrous casing. Sure. So mm -hmm. most of the summer sauces you'll find in a fibrous casing like this, it's, it's a little cheaper. Uh, this is uh, quite a bit more expensive, but it's got a beautiful mahogany color and uh, takes on nice smoke flavor. So it's the changing and the it changes the flavor for sure. A little bit, yeah. Okay, okay. How long have these been in the smoker? Oh, they've been smoking since one o'clock yesterday. Uh, we want to hit it with uh, some hot water. We want to do it directly with the hose to make sure we get the, the grease off any sausages that might have uh, too much grease on. The shower itself isn't a strong enough stream to actually blast the okay. grease off. Did you go to school for this? 
I did not. Everything was taught to me, uh, uh, old sausage maker Dwayne Genske and, uh, and Chuck Miesfeld. They were the guys that uh, put the knowledge upon me. I, sure. I started out the same as Darren, cleaning up uh, after school at night, and then uh, just progressed from there. I don't know, it's just something that you pick up uh, and you just stick with it. Just like anything else, like uh, someone that blows glass or a baker or anything like that, cheese makers. Right, I should do it. We'll push her back in a smokehouse and then we'll turn the uh, shower miser on. I mean, when you go to a restaurant and you see Miesfeld's products on the menu, what does that feel like? Ah, uh, that makes me proud. Makes me proud. Uh, all the guys around here uh, take pride in it. Yeah, you're gonna get a little wet. <laughs> there this is uh, the right place to enter into this operation for me. Somewhere in that sanitation department. <laughs> Even then, I'm sure I'd have a lot to learn. That was an experience. The one thing that I will say though, hanging around in that smokehouse, watching this all come together, I'm starving. We're gonna hook up with Rich, and we're gonna try out these Miesfeld brats. Hey, Luke. Hey, hey, how's it going? Good, I hope you worked up an appetite oh, in there. I am starving, literally. This is my store manager, Tracy. Hey, Tracy, how's it going? Good, how you doing? Good, nice to meet you. How long have you been with the company? 36 years. 36 years? Yep. Are you 36 years old? I mean, is that, is that the joke? Because like, you, yep. don't, you don't look much uh, beyond that, actually. Is this ready to go? This is ready. We can get the brats ready to go? anytime. Okay. We got Great. fresh brats made by you. <laughs> hey, hey, let's hope not, huh? <laughs> so I'm just gonna have you walk me through this as simple as possible. I got my hand on this thing. This is not a tremendous amount of heat. Nope, you want it to burn down a little bit, get a nice good wet of, bed of white coals so you don't burst your casings right away. Um, I previously soaked them in cold water, makes the casings more pliable so they don't burst on you. You want to cook a brat at a longer, slow heat, otherwise they just burst and then you lose all your juices and your flavoring. If you're gonna keep it warm for a party afterwards, then you use the beer butter and onions, okay. but you don't want to boil it because then you're extracting your flavors out of it when you're boiling it. Sure. How do you actually eat your brat? Because I think that that's... Sheboygan, we eat a double brat on a hard roll with ketchup, mustard, pickles, and onions. Ketchup, mustard, pickles, and onions. How about you? Me, I'm just uh, onions and mustard, just plain and simple. Onions and mustard. Well, it's got to be a double. It's got to be a double. Yeah. Like two, okay. My wife's from Madison. She still makes fun of me today. She goes, you never eat a brat on a brat bun. I was like, I don't even know what a brat bun is. <laughs> it's a hard roll and a double brat. It's the only way you eat them. Oh, that's great. Like, when does kraut come into the, the picture? Does it's it ever? Polish sausage. I'm Polish sausage. Wow. We're getting some real identity clashes yeah, here. This yeah, is yeah. great. This is really great. There are great. some that do uh, brats on a brat bun, and they put Polish sausage okay. on it. But the majority of the people in the Sheboygan area are gonna do a double brat with just the condiments, whatever it may be, and no kraut. And no kraut. So these look like they're pretty close to being done. These are ready to eat, these are done. Nice. I think it's time for a sampler. What do you think, Luke? Yeah, I'm ready. I'm starving. You wanna slice one and a half for us, Tracy, and we each have a little sample here? Yeah. <laughs> He's been waiting to bring the shank out the whole time. That's great. <laughs> Awesome. Cooked to perfection. Cooked to perfection. Crispy skin on the outside, not blown out at all. No thanks to me. <laughs> yep. We're just missing a beer. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's a hard part grilling without a cold beer. <laughs> That's what cools down your fingers after you pick up the hot right? rock. First and foremost, this is delicious. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. The hard roll, that's a real, like a Sheboygan identity thing. Tell me a little bit about the story of hard rolls. The Sheboygan hard roll, it's a dried roll done in a hearth oven, so it's a little bit more crispy on the top of it. Cornmeal on the bottom of it, and that's part of your extra flavoring. Some people toast them, some people just do them the way they are, because it does have a nice crunchy top to it from that hearth oven. Do you have a preferred bakery in town? Uh, my favorite's gotta be City Bakery, foremost. You gotta wait in line sometimes in the morning if you don't put your order in early, yep. otherwise you're not gonna get them, so. You won't even get them. Really? You gotta call early. Yep, gotta yeah. call ahead. That's, I mean, that's awesome. They're definitely doing something right over there. But there's a couple other bakeries in town that do hard rolls too, right? Yep. yep. Any of them like wildly different? They all have their own little bit of a different yep. thing, but they're all, the end result is the same concept. Okay. But they're all just a touch different spice or different whatever they're using. 
Nice. I guarantee you my 89-year-old grandmother can pick out exactly which one it is. <laughs> That's, I'm really noticing that the stories in Sheboygan, there's a tremendous amount of cultural identity in all of this food, and everyone has their own spin on it. What actually makes Sheboygan the best? But I think world-renowned Miesfeld's Brats yeah. are the best brats in the world. Yep. <laughs> That's fantastic. We'll vouch for it. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thank you so much for this behind the scenes tour of Miesfelds. And uh, I think you also planted a little bit of a seed and, and something that I have to check out is what is the best hard roll? What makes the best hard roll? And what gives Sheboygan that identity? Thanks so much. Appreciate having you, Luke. Oh, we appreciate being Thanks. here. Thanks a lot. Good. All right. You know, in all my years, there's no way to make these things look sexy. Color red helps. <laughs> These people take this really, really seriously. I know that this is really important to the identity of Wisconsin, to the identity of Sheboygan, and they have to be producing brats, so it has to move a little bit faster. So these are, these Grand Champion brats, there's a high demand. Introducing Organic Valley Ultra, milk with more protein, half the sugar, and no toxic pesticides. Let's be honest, none of that healthy stuff really matters unless our kids will drink it. Yeah, I would drink that. Did you hear that? She would drink that! <laughs> Parents are weird. More protein, half the sugar. Organic Valley Ultra. The dairy farmers of Wisconsin are proud to underwrite Wisconsin Foodie and remind you that in Wisconsin, we dream in cheese. Just look for our badge. It's on everything we make. Employee-owned Nugler's Brewing Company has been brewing and bottling beer for their friends only in Wisconsin since 1993. Just a short drive from Madison, come visit Swiss Wisconsin and see where your beer is made. Wisconsin's Great Outdoors has something for everyone. Come for the adventure, stay for the memories. Go wild in Wisconsin. To build your adventure, visit dnr.wi.gov. From production to processing, right down to our plates, there are over 15,000 employers in Wisconsin with career opportunities to fulfill your dreams and feed the world. Hungry for more? Shape your career with these companies and others at fabwisconsin.com. Specialty crop craft beverages use fruit grown on Wisconsin orchards and vineyards to create award-winning ciders and wines. Wisconsin's cold climate creates characteristics and complexities that make this craft beverage unique to our state. Society Insurance. Freshwater Family Farms. J. Henry and Sons Bourbon. Something special from Wisconsin. Marcus Hotels and Resorts. Central Wisconsin Craft Collective. 91.7 WMSE. Edible Milwaukee Magazine. Also with the support of the Friends of PBS Wisconsin. For more information about upcoming Wisconsin Foodie special events and dinners, please go to wisconsinfoodie.com. Still hungry for more? Get connected on Facebook and Instagram, and also make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, where you'll find past episodes and special segments.